certainly there's a lot going on in this country right now having to do with use of force issue, issues, race relations. There's kind of seems like growing tensions between the police and citizens, and we certainly don't want that. We really want to work on um, sharing information between those two groups and trying to not have a bridge and understanding that police are, are the citizens and citizens are the police and kind of making us all as one. So having a class like this gives us an opportunity for us to teach the community a little bit about use of force and what we know about it, and also for us to listen to community members and hear about their concerns and thoughts about force as well. Yeah, certainly there's been a few civil suits that have been in the media and have gotten the attention of, of citizens and our officers as well. And it's actually, you know, some of these cases certainly make us think about, like, what do people know about use of force? Have we done what we need to do to educate people about being able to best assess those sorts of situations when they see something like a video or they read a report? In general, I've heard myths about use of force as far as, like, you know, why don't we if we ever have to use deadly force, and our department hasn't done that, but just on a national scale, like why don't we for have our firearm aim for people's ankles or their wrists, or like, you know, that officers have to wait to be hit before they can take any sort of action. There's some common myths around force. Um, and also just understanding we have different levels of force on us that we carry all the time, and understanding when those can and can't be used. And it's really based on looking at what the subject is doing, and then looking at what, what the officer perceives they're doing, and then knowing which tool to use. Well, we're going to just talk about the different force steps, understanding that even me standing here in uniform is a level of force, you know, moving up to verbal commands and physical and defensive tactics and deadly force. So we'll be moving through that use of force continuum. Um, we'll look at the federal model and the local state model that we use to measure, you know, how we use force. One of the felons actually reported that he had already assaulted one officer, was running through a field somewhere, heard a shotgun rack behind him. The officer said, if you move, I'll kill you. And he said, I knew that that guy wasn't screwing around where the other guy, I thought I could get an edge on him. So just our presence in and of itself, um, being squared away, that, that in, in and of itself can prevent you from having to use force to begin with because, you know, that's going to be a deciding factor in some people's minds. We'll be looking at the different weapons that we carry so people have an understanding of them. We'll certainly uh, look at some of those myths that I just talked about. We'll look at what we do when we use force, how it's documented here, uh, as well as what happens if someone is injured and how we document that. Uh, and then we'll end with doing some assessments. We have some video clips of force being used, not here in Northampton, but just short clips that people can look at and we can assess together once people have gained that knowledge that we've taught them in the class. Sometimes when we see a video and there's violence involved, we just don't like it. We're like, oh my god, that's awful. And it is awful. We don't like it, we don't want to be engaged in it. Uh, but this is kind of the nature of our jobs. I would say that in this community, we have an excellent relationship with our community members by and large. I think that many people are so supportive of the police department. And people come up to me almost daily. I get an email or someone will come up to me on the street and say, hey, you know, I, I met this officer. They helped me out with this. And generally, I hear very positive things about our officers. Um, sure, sometimes people are upset at an action that was taken or they may you know, report something else. But in general, I would say the great majority of our population is incredibly supportive. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be putting forth an effort to continue communication with community members so that we maintain that good relationship that we have.